What up, y'all? It's your boy Dawson from DND TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of y'all who will, you know I appreciate it. Also, go over to my other YouTube page, Dawson Speak TV. Make sure you subscribe over there. Now, let's get into this story. A Toledo, Ohio jury found 50-year-old Arthur Day Jr. guilty of rape. A judge sentenced him to 10 years to life. In 2017, the victim went with Dade, also known as Apostle Dade, to the store. The prosecutors say that Dade pulled into a parking lot and raped the 10-year-old boy in the backseat of the car. The suspect also threatened to kill the boy's family if he told. Dade was also close to the victim's family. Family and sometimes preached at the family's church. Dade plans to appeal his sentence. Now, you all know how I feel about the kids, and when it comes to the kids, I don't hold back, so this will be one of those videos. If you can't take it, please log off right now. If so, hold on, and I'll be right back after this. Well, a Toledo man sentenced to 10 years to life for rape. A jury finding Arthur Day guilty of raping a 10-year-old boy, and as Alexis Means reports, that man, Dade, occasionally preached at the family's church. The judge called 50-year-old Arthur Dade a sinner. He won't see the streets for at least 10 years. That's if he gets out. Dade was convicted of raping a 10-year-old boy. The victim's father told the court when he learned his son was raped, the suspect left town. Now I'm a dad, and I'm a pastor, but I'm also a man. And I don't believe in being a father that you just going to jeopardize and hurt my son and think you ain't going to answer to me. Dade sometimes preached at the family's church. He was a spiritual son that was brought to us. You know, we went down the road and I consecrated him. He didn't have a spiritual dad and I took him up under my wings. And uh, we see this as the outcome. In 2017, during a family gathering, the young boy went with Dade to the store without his parents' permission. The prosecutor says Dade pulled into a parking lot and raped the boy in the back seat of a car. He also threatened to kill the boy's family if he told anyone. The victim's father says his heart breaks for his little boy. He has a message for other pastors, ministers, and first ladies that we need to get our act together. Dade will have to register as a sex offender for life if he's ever released from prison. The victim's father said the justice system worked in his son's favor. And all I can say is victory got a big mouth. One thing I know, you can't play both sides of the fence. you either with God or you're not. The 50-year-old convicted rapist declined to make a comment in court. Arthur Dade told the court that he plans to appeal his sentence. Reporting from downtown, Alexis Means. Thanks, Alexis. I'll take it from here. All right, y'all, let's go in. Now, first of all, I want to say I want to commend the young boy for having uh, the courage to testify against Arthur, Apostle Arthur Dade in court and to tell what happened to him. And that took a lot of courage, and I just, I'm, I'm really proud that he was able to do that. And I also want to commend the, the parents of this young boy for pursuing this, uh, this whole case and making sure that it went to court and pressing charges and everything. Because a lot of times, and y'all know I've been doing social work almost for over, wait, by 12, 13 years now? It's been a long time. A lot of times when it comes to the molestation or rape of young boys, a lot of times that does not go to court and sometimes parents don't want to take that to court because they don't want their child their son to be tainted or for the community to know that this happened to their child because in many cases people think that if a young boy was molested he's going to grow up to be kind of funny he's going to be gay he's going to be this and so to keep that stigma from their son many times parents won't take that to court they won't call the police and especially when it happens within a church, many times, it, even with young girls, people don't do anything about it. Let's pray. Let's take it before the elders of the church. Let's do this. But when someone has been violated sexually, you could take it before the elders of the church all you want to. That don't mean that's going to heal that person. That doesn't mean that child's going to be healed and it does not rectify the problem. So I just, I'm grateful that his parents went ahead and just followed this whole case all the way through, and I'm glad that justice is being served. Now, let me tell y'all this. I know now everybody is up on this thing, hashtag 
you know, surviving R. Kelly. All of that. I'm not talking about that case and all this kind of stuff. Because to me, I... It makes me upset. Let me tell y'all why it makes me upset as a social worker. And that's why I'm able to do my videos and come off as passionate as I am. Because I've been seeing this stuff for years. And many times I'm in the courtroom or with therapists. And many of these people are not, they're not black people, y'all. And even when I have clients in our community who have sexually transmitted disease, I look at sometimes, and I know it happens with every race and all this kind of stuff, but the stuff that goes on with black people, and we don't even deal with it. We don't deal with sexual molestation. We don't deal with it if it's in the family, if it's in the church, if it's, if it's in the community. But when it's a celebrity or somebody else, oh, let's, let's, let's put them on blast. Oh, look what they did. They did all this. But we've been knowing that for years. But your cousin in your house was molested and you won't say a damn thing about it. Your little cousin, your niece, your nephew were molested by one of the uncles, one of the other cousins, and y'all won't say nothing about it. And God forbid it be a boy. Oh, my God. Hell, you know, you let's pray, y'all. And, you know, hell, go for a football. Go for a basketball, you know, because you're going to be okay because mama ain't raised no punks. Daddy ain't raised no punk. No, mama and daddy, you a punk if your son got molested and you didn't do nothing about it. You a damn punk. Now, I want y'all to look here with me. Now, this is Apostles Arthur C. Dade's uh, Facebook page. And you can see here it says that he is uh, the founder at Power of Pentecost Incorpor Incorporated. And it has here that he is the owner and president of operations at Total Deliverance Cleaning Services Incorporated LLC, which is his business. He has a cleaning business. And with his cleaning business, he hires a lot of teenage boys to work with him. And he posts a lot of stuff, uh, pictures of them on his uh, his Facebook page. And these were teenage boys, I guess, who, you know, had some troubles in the neighborhood or whatnot. And he allowed them to come work with him. And that would be fine. But since he has been sentenced to 10 years to life in uh, prison for uh, raping a young boy, it makes me think, did he, you know, intentionally go out? looking for young boys in the community to recruit, to work for his cleaning business and also do other things with. And then I'm looking at all of these sayings that are on his Facebook page, like this one right here. And it says here, give me all the rejected young men. Do you know why? I was once young, but now I'm old. All they need is to be taught character, discipline and order. Preachers got to learn got to learn how to know their assignment without promoting themselves. I thank God for patience and now the ability to lead these young men into their appointed time. That looks good on Facebook. And some people may have gave him a thumbs up and all this kind of stuff, but no one saw the heart of this so-called apostle that he was a pedophile. The fact that he could hide behind his cleaning business and giving these wayward boys a job. But he and, and I'm just going to say it to me. I think he had, uh, you know, uh, other intentions besides just having them work for him. We have to be careful with people who can put all this stuff. uh, Pen uh Power of Pentecost Incorporated. I'm apostle this on Facebook. All of these things uh, and everything on his Facebook is God bless. Thank God for this. All this stuff about God, the usual stuff that church people do and church people say, and I praise God for this and it's a blessing and all of this stuff, but yet he is a pedophile and he is in prison for rape where he should be. And he's not the only one, y'all. There are tons of men and women who are doing the same thing on social media. They're going to churches. They're going to after school programs. They're under the guise as teachers, as preachers, as apostles, as, as a prophetess. And they have an ulterior motive. They after your children. They're after vic they're looking for victim, vulnerable victims in the church. And because many of us, all somebody got to do is quote a scripture, have charisma, get hooping and hollering and shouting. And we give our whole life over to them. Oh, they got the anointing. 
Oh, that's apostle. Apostle, what the Lord tell you to say to me? Apostle this, apostle that. Apostle is an apostle is a pedophile. You let the pedophile lay hands on you. You want the pedophile to pray for you. And since nobody in the church could discern this, I'm glad the judge did. And the judge said, you going to prison, buddy. This ain't the church. I'm glad the law was able to do that. Because if it was left up to us, oh, we'll forgive what God forgave us. God forgive him. And, you know, the children will just get over it. The hell with that. The children will go through whatever they need to go through in adults will to get over, to get better with their lives. Because some people, they have post-traumatic, you know, syndrome. Some people, they, they, they're stuck. And they repeat stuff in their mind like it happened yesterday. And it's been 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago. And they've never dealt with those issues. I'm glad this man has gone to prison. I hope he spends more than 10 years in there. And trust me, pedophiles don't do good in prison anyway. So y'all know how that going to go. But I want y'all parents to wake up. And you people who are guardians for kids, wake up. Stop being so naive. I don't care. I don't care how, what the pastor have, what the first lady have, what the people in the church have, how nice they come across, what they drive. They got money. They got this. All that mess. Forget that. Don't look at none of that mess. Take care of your kids. And if anything happened in the church with molestation, with anything, don't let these people talk you out of going to the police. Oh, let's handle it in the church. Oh, don't, no, no, no. We're going to let the police handle it. We're going to let the judge handle it. Because if they did it to my child, they're going to do it to somebody else's child. Don't, and some of y'all, y'all, y'all parents, y'all, y'all have low self-esteem to me. Well, well, if I don't go to my church, then what I'm going to do? So you sacrifice your children for the sake of church and community and fellowship. And your child is basically, their heart is bleeding. They're walking around wounded. And you think they just forgot that somebody in the church did this to them, somebody in the community. And many of you all will sacrifice your children for that. I knew I was going to get to this comment and I'm glad I did. Because this young boy wrote me on the video I did and you all can go back to that video and see it on the about the pastor who uh, knowingly transferred uh, transmitted HIV to uh, someone else. And I pinned the comment. It came from Stephen Patman. And he said, I was raised, sacrificed by a single mother who constantly put me in situations in which I was molested and starved. I still understand where you're coming from. Yet, can you please do a video on some single mothers who claim to love the Lord yet hate their children? And I'm going to throw not only mothers in there, but fathers too. People who have sacrificed their children for the sake of the church. That's Bishop. Oh, you know, these kids lie. I don't believe that happened. Oh, we're going to pray it away. And the devil is busy. No, you're not busy being a parent. And many times that's why social service has to come in and take these kids away. Now I'm finna get off of this. But before I go, let me tell y'all this. Just before the holidays, I think it was actually round about, uh, I think it was the day before Thanksgiving. And one of my clients who is dealing with depression and has been for, oh my God, for, for years, she called me and she said, you know, social worker, you had been telling me I need to get out the house and experience life and everything. And she was like, well, I'm here with a friend and we're making Thanksgiving dinner. And after Thanksgiving, we're going to go and we're going to feed the homeless. And I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then she told me, she said, you know what, social worker? She was like, I never told you this, but I was molested by my brother. She was like, my brother, my oldest brother molested me and my sisters. And she, he, she said, my mother knew about it and allowed it to happen. And she was like, for so many years, I never knew why. And she said, one day my older sister was going to get some water late at night out of the kitchen. And she saw my brother come out of my mother's room butt naked. My mother had been molesting my older brother. 
And she said, social worker incest has gone on in my family with cousins, with everybody. She was like, I've had to fight that so much in my life. She was like, I didn't tell you everything because I didn't know if I could trust you. She was like, but even now in my 50s, I'm still dealing with that. And for us to think that people, and I've said this before to children who go through this stuff, you think it just going to magically disappear? It shows up in people's life. And if you've been through anything that you feeling depressed, you feeling suicidal, you feeling like you can't make it, go talk to somebody. Go talk to somebody. I get so many of y'all emails. I get your letters and things like that. And trust me when I say I'm praying for y'all. But it's it, it can be overwhelming at times because I'm like, I, I'm somebody on the internet. Y'all need somebody y'all could talk to. Y'all need somebody you can reach out to. And if it's therapy, whatever it is, go get the help you need. Go get the help you need for your own sake. Don't worry about what these people say. Oh, just drop your burdens down at the altar. No, when them, them burdens them followed you at home, you didn't leave them at the altar. They been with you a couple of years. You better go talk to somebody. Because a boy wrote me, telling me something he was suicidal over something that happened. And my first words were, man, it ain't worth being suicidal. Go get the help you need. Go get the help you need. And sometimes it may be family that we have to detach from. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, you love your family, but you better love you more. You only got one life to live. This your life. They not living for you and you can't live for them. Do what you need to do to make your life better. Again, let's take care of these kids. Let's do what we need to do as a community, as parents. And Arthur Apostle Dade, I'm, I'm glad justice serve, was served and you're in prison. Although I think you should have got more than 10 years. It said 10 years to life. It should have been at least like 30 to life or something like that because you're, you're up for parole after 10 years. Y'all take care of yourself and each other. Go off in the comments. Peace.